What's going on guys, RBG here, back with another update for Marvel's Avengers. You might have noticed that I've been MIA on some of the news for this game, and it's honestly because I've been having a blast playing it. Like it's been addicting farming for the best gear for my Captain America build, and since I had to literally replay the campaign over in order to capture the footage for my review, I had a lot of catching up to do. Watching everyone brag about the insane damage they deal out with their characters had me itching to get in on the fun. But that's not what we're here to talk about. What we really want to talk about is the post-launch heroes. They've been the most talked about thing since the game has launched, and I think fans are just ready to expand the roster since there are only a handful of characters we have at our disposal. I've experienced some awkward moments with you guys when I've had to ask if I can main a certain character during missions. Captain America is obviously one of those characters that everyone loves to play with, but there is only one Steve Rogers, and unfortunately not everyone can play with him, and that can be said for each respective Avengers member. So we need as many characters as possible to keep things fresh. One of the members that you heard me say would be the first post-launch character would be Black Panther himself. There were so many things fouled within the data mines that suggested that he would more than likely be playable very soon, from his movesets to his audio clips, and some of you stated that it was a little too early for that particular character to be released. We still have other contenders such as Captain Marvel and She-Hulk who were also found within the data mines. But as it turns out, I was right on the money with my assumption. Crystal Dynamics was indeed going to do a rollout for T'Challa in the next War Table stream, but as we know, they ended up changing it since Chadwick Boseman passed away and they didn't want to seem like they were capitalizing off his death. I think the message they showed in their most recent War Table stream was pretty self-explanatory and it further confirmed that BP was rearing and ready to go. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, the fact that the actor passed away less than 24 hours after I made that video talking about the character really spooked the heck out of me. Like I didn't feel right talking about it so I thought it was only necessary to wait a while before I made a Black Panther related video out of respect for Mr. Bozeman. Rest in peace to him. But as I mentioned earlier, we knew that Black Panther's data mine came with a lot of things such as dialogue files to back up the theories that he would be in the game, and history has repeated itself because we found similar things for other future characters, except this time around we had actual audio clips that you could hear. Now to prevent this video from getting copyright struck by Square Enix, I'm not going to be playing any of them, I'll just say them verbally for you guys to be on the safe side. The first audio clip comes in the form of a mystery person saying, and I quote, let me know if you need anything, King T'Challa. And in my opinion, I think this could be an NPC of some sort when you walk past them as Black Panther, because for one, the voice doesn't really sound that interesting. If anything, it sounds like she could be a vendor. Since she doesn't have a Wakandan accent, it sounds like she could be located either in the Chimera Hell Carrier or the Ant Hill Hideout. But moving on, the next clip we have is in regards to Spider-Man himself. As we all know, he's going to be making his way to the PlayStation 4 and 5 versions of the game, and fans are eagerly waiting to see what direction Crystal Dynamics goes with him in terms of his looks and voice. I still have my fingers crossed that they hire Josh Keaton to do the voice since he voiced one of, if not the best rendition of the character, that being Spectacular Spider-Man. But we'll just have to wait and see what they do, because this audio file doesn't feature Spidey talk at all. It simply features Kamala saying, oh hi Spider-Man, along with other mystery voices addressing him simply as Peter. And I think this pretty much confirms that everyone on the Avengers team will know his secret identity. Back when we found the data mines for Spider-Man, it simply said Peter Parker instead of Spider-Man, and I assumed this was because the devs wanted to add other versions of Spider-Man down the line such as Miles or possibly Venom. I still think that could likely happen, but it seems like Spider will be addressed as Peter among some of his peers. But then again, it could also be said by some of the people in his personal life such as Aunt May and Mary Jane, since it's been suggested that he will come with his own campaign missions. So yeah, shout out to Peter, man. The next audio clip sounds like it could possibly be Black Widow greeting someone named Jen and Captain America saying hi to a person named Carol. And these two individuals are obviously Jennifer Walters aka She-Hulk and Carol Danvers aka Captain Marvel. Both characters have been found within the data mines and have been highly alluded to in some of the promotions. We saw a girl wearing a She-Hulk t-shirt in the CG trailer and we saw plenty of easter eggs regarding Captain Marvel such as a poster of what her in-game model will look like and I think we got a possible confirmation that she'll get her classic Miss Marvel costume thanks to another poster in Kamala's room. Besides those characters, we got another audio clip mentioning the Winter Soldier, and I think he's gonna be featured first as a villain since the prequel novels state that Captain America hasn't seen Bucky since he was encased in ice. So this game will more than likely be introducing the Winter Soldier as a villain boss battle and later on as a playable character, which I think is a good idea. Like, I know a lot of fans are gonna be mad salty if Bucky comes out unplayable at first, but I personally don't mind if we get him later on down the line, because this game desperately needs more villain fights. Like, that was one of the biggest criticisms I had towards the game. The fact that there weren't that many bosses besides aimbots and adaptoids. Speaking of adaptoids, it looks like we're going to be getting another addition in the aim family that I'm really looking forward to, and that is the super adaptoid. 
Since AIM was introduced into the game's story, it was obvious that we'd get the super adapt toys somewhere down the line. By the way guys, I forgot to mention that all the things I talked about were found by a Twitter account called Miller, and that's with 8 M's in his name. According to his info, he provided the Super Adaptoid will more than likely come via a boss fight in the upcoming Cape Bishop DLC. As some of you know, this particular villain possesses the ability to mimic the powers of the Avengers members, and Miller mentions that he can embiggen like Kamala, throw his hammer and shield like Thor and Cap, shoot a unit beam from his chest like Iron Man, and he can teleport and make clones of himself to possibly counteract some of Cape Bishop's heroics, because she's been reported to have a move where she can make holographic projections of herself, and as you've seen by the reveal trailer, she has the power to teleport. As for Clint Barton, we still haven't gotten any confirmation on what his heroics will consist of. All we got is a very blurry image that alludes to him possibly getting his classic outfit, because you can see this mask. But moving on, we got another character who we weren't quite sure if he would make it in or not, and that's War Machine. Although his name was included in the data mines, many assumed that he could be nothing more than an alternate skin for Iron Man. Since he is for the most part an Echo character, some fans thought he'd be a pointless addition. But as I've stated earlier, it's not necessarily a bad thing since Echo characters can alleviate the issue of someone else picking Iron Man before you. You still have the opportunity of playing with a die bomber type character in the form of War Machine, and thanks in part to Miller we have a confirmation that James Rhodey will in fact be playable. As you can see, he looks very similar to the Lego figure we got last year that added to our assumptions. It features the shoulder mounted blaster which is a clear sign that he'll play quite differently from Iron Man. War Machine is a heavier tank than Iron Man so they hopefully will lean into that fact. Considering the fact that the developers have based a huge amount of the moves off the MCU, I'm expecting him to have something like his missile and blaster barrage from the Iron Man 2 for one of his heroics, and maybe he'll feature that badass electrified baton from Captain America Civil War. I'm also expecting him to come with his own campaign mission since the other confirmed characters such as Kate and Clint will have their own. It seems like the majority of the post-launch heroes will feature stories that essentially catch us up on what they've been up to since the events of A-Day, which is dope because I love seeing the different perspectives of all of these members during certain events. But moving on, I want to talk about one of the best leaks and that's regarding the stages. Something that's been quite apparent since this game's launch is how uninspired the level designs are, and the heroic gauntlets and mega hives really highlight this, particularly with the aim facilities. Pretty much every floor in the aim facilities look the same, and more often times than not I found myself completely forgetting what mission type I was playing because of it. Like am I playing the Mega Hive or am I playing the Heroic Gauntlet? There isn't much of a difference between the two other than the fact that one just continues to go through 14 levels while the other takes you on separate 8 elite hives that gradually increase in difficulty. When I saw the reveals for Hawkeye and Kate Bishop, I was deeply concerned because if you look closely at the backgrounds, you see them fighting in those very same aim facilities. So I was a bit worried that it would be like this for each other post-launch heroes. But the latest leak from Miller reminded me that we're getting Wakanda. According to him, Wakanda will feature two locations such as the Borderland and the Jungle. If you followed my previous video covering Black Panther, you know that he's gonna come with a raid mission, and apparently that raid will lead to a boss fight with Claw inside the mining facility, which makes a lot of sense, because as we all know, Claw is always trying to obtain Wakanda's most valuable asset, that being vibranium, and sell it to the highest bidder. I have a nagging suspicion that he's under the employment of AIM, and they may be trying to acquire vibranium to further enhance their adaptoids, but we'll just have to wait and see. Anyways guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there. What are your thoughts on all these leaks? Does it raise your excitement on things to come from Marvel's Avengers? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask you to like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future content. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media outlets. Sharing really makes a difference. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.